In this presentation, we're going to record deposits into our accounting system, the type of deposits that are often there when we start a new business, that being deposits from the owner or deposits from a loan. After that point, hopefully after the business is established, the deposits are mostly coming from customers. But when we start off, we may have these kind of common deposits from the owner or from a loan, and they're a little bit more unusual than the customer deposits. They're not things that happen all the time. Therefore, they can actually be a little bit more difficult when we start the organization have these types of deposits. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Company dashboard. We're going to first be opening up our balance sheet. So let's go ahead and go to the accounting drop down and scroll on down to that balance sheet or just go on down to the balance sheet. Not really scrolling, but just going. And then once that opens, we're going to go ahead and right click on the tab up top. We're going to duplicate that tab up top. So we're going to have the balance sheet to the right and we're going to have uh, the data input that we will be doing on the left. Let's change the date now to 2020. So we will be working in 2020. We're entering data for January 2020. So let's go ahead and go to January 31st of 2020. Now we're going to be entering deposits into the system. So the cash account is going to be going up. And we're going to have a deposit from the owner. So the other side will be equity in that case. The owner putting in money. So it's not going to go to the income statement, but to equity. And then we'll have a deposit related to a loan, which means cash will go up and we'll be entering and, uh, and increasing the loan amount as well. The reason these are a little bit more unusual or it can be a little bit more confusing than other types of deposits is because they're not part of any normal kind of process. I'm over here now on the QuickBooks desktop just to look at the flow chart. Notice we're hoping that most of the time the deposits come from this kind of customer flow. And if that's the case, then we have a system for that because those are common deposits. When we're talking about deposits that don't come from the customers, then it's a little bit more less systematic. It's something that doesn't happen all the time as we would hope deposits from customers do. And therefore, uh, you know, you kind of have to kind of think about that a little bit more because we don't have just normal forms or normal processes that we do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for those types of transactions. So those you kind of want to think of transactions that way in your mind. Is this a transaction that's part of the normal flow process that we do all the time that happens over and over again? If it is, you're probably going to have set forms and procedures related to it, such as the invoices and whatnot, receive payment type of forms. And if it's not as something that happens daily on a daily basis, then you're, you may not have kind of a set type of form and you're going to have to think about what's the best way to enter this type of transaction. So we're going to go back over and we're going to be entering this information. Now this is a deposit so we can use like a cash in type of form. I'm going to go back to the first tab here, select the plus button up top. And so we're dealing with cash. So whenever we have a cash transaction, we can think about, you know, receiving and paying payments. So we're going to say that we have a receive money which is basically kind of like a, a deposit form. We can think of it as a deposit form. Now, this could be a form that we can use. Uh, I'm going to select the checking account when we have a sale that's just for cash, but we can also use it basically as simply a deposit form for the purposes we have. This is going to be a deposit from the owner. So we could put the owner here. I'm just going to put owner. You could put the owner name as who the deposit is from. We're going to put the deposit date. I'm going to say January 1st. So let's go to January 1 and reference number. I won't have a reference and no tax. Not going to have an item because uh, we're not selling any inventory here or service item. Description, I'm just going to say owner deposit or owner investments, you might call it. Uh, let's say quantity and we're going to have the amount of 65 thousand so the owner's putting in sixty five thousand now the other side where's the other side going to go obviously this is going to be going into the bank account because that's what we chose here that's we're receiving money going into the bank account where's the other side going to go it's not going to go to revenue right it's not going to go to the income statement it has to go to some kind of equity account so so we can go through here and say okay what kind of equity accounts does zero set up for us so we're looking for equity section here's the equity section we've got the owner's capital We've got the owner's capital, owner investment, draws, and then retained earnings. So probably the most appropriate would be going to the investment account. You want, you do want to consider like sometimes people just group the the revenue or equity section together. They like to see it in one account. Everything's rolling in in this case to to retain earnings. Uh, some people like seeing the investments go into something like like one owner account and then they separate the draws. Or you could separate both of them and say, hey, here's how much money I put into the company. Here's how much money I took out. Track those separately and then have the retained earnings 
or something like retained earnings with the capital account simply representing the income that's rolling over that that's going to be so and that's how we'll do it here retained earnings for us for our equity section will simply be the earning the retained earnings meaning the revenue that's rolling over into equity and then we'll select we'll uh we'll go over or put into another equity account the owner investment which are increases not from revenue but from us directly putting money into the business as the owner so let's go ahead and record this let's see what happens what's what do we expect to happen we expect cash to go up and the other side to be going to the equity account all right so let's go ahead and save that and see if that is indeed the case so then we'll go up back over to the balance sheet it should refresh as I go into the checking account, so it's not fresh yet. It's not, not fresh right now, but when I click on this zoom button or the drill down button, it should freshen up as we go in there and hopefully add that new transaction. So we're going to scroll back down, and there we have it. So there's the 65000 and and we have increased the checking account. So if I go back into that, I can zoom into there. It's a receive money, and then here's our transaction detail, the receive money transaction. Let's go back. Uh, we're going to go back here and then go back uh, to our balance sheet where we can see the checking account now at 90000 Then I'm going to go down the other sides in equity and we put it into our new equity account. So we got retained earnings representing just the, the income going forward. And now we have our new investment account, which represents us, the owners, putting money into equity. This amount didn't go through the income statement going directly into uh, the equity. So there we have that. There's our 65,000. It's a receive money type of transaction. Let's see if I can go back to the report up top. Okay, so now we're going to do this again, but we're going to say, what if we got the money from a loan? So again, it's not coming from the customer, but it's coming from a loan at this point in time. So we're going to do the same similar kind of transaction. We're going to go back to the first tab going to go to the plus button and we're going to be adding receive money. Once again, money is going to be coming in, but this time it is from a loan going to be going into our checking account so i'm going to say that's going to go into our checking account so we'll select that item and then we're going to say from and i'm just going to say chase that's going to be a bank we're assuming chase is where well chase is a bank and we're assuming that's who we got the loan from and then i'm going to say that this happens on say january 10th i'm going to go with january 10th how about that and then we're not going to have an item we're going to say the description is a bank loan and the quantity I'm going to say is 50,000. Uh, well, let's, let's not make that the quantity. Let's make that the price. I'll make the quantity one, 50,000. And then the other account. So this is going to go into the checking account. What's the other side going to do? It's not going to be going to income. Once again, it will be going to a loan. So I'm going to see a loan account. Now we have a loan account that we put up for note payable. And here we have that. I'm going to like assume that we have another type of loan just to think about how we might be setting up the, the loan. So I'm going to set up another account. This one's na uh, numbered uh, 2805. So let's say we say 2810, uh, let's say. And then I'm going to say tab. Uh, can't do it that way. I'm going to set up a new account. So I'm going to add a new account. I'm going to try to memorize that account number, which was 2810. And then the account type, I'm going to put into a liability account. So I'm going to make it another liability account. So I'm going to, I want to make it a long term. I'm going to make it non-current liability because that's where I like to list basically the loans together and group them into that section. And then I'm going to say that uh, the name is a note payable. And then I might put the name, the number of, of the loan, like the last four digits of the phone of the loan number or something like that. So I can identify the, the individual loans. I'm not going to put anything else for the description. So notice we're setting up a new account as we put this into uh, the system. Main point when you do so, make sure that you're picking the correct account type. This one being a liability, we're going to put it into non-current or otherwise known as long-term liability. So there we have that. This is going to be increasing then the checking account by that 50000 The other side is going to be going to that loan payable. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's see what happens then. Let's go on over to our balance sheet. And we're going to update the balance sheet this time. So I'm going to update the balance sheet. And then if I scroll down and we go into the cash account, it's now at the 140000 going into that 140000 using the Zoom feature. And then scrolling on down we will see our transactions where we have the 65 and now the 50 for the money in so let's see uh, the other side of the transaction so i'm going to go back up top going to say back 
and go to our other side, which is going to be in the liabilities. So if I scroll down to the liabilities, then we have our loans. Now see what we have here. I got two loans now listed out because some kind of indus some industries, some types of industries, you may have multiple loans. I think it's useful to, to have one loan account rather than short term and long term. Put them under the long term liabilities, even if there's a short term portion of them or even if they're short term in some cases, because it can help you to kind of group the loans together and then monthly break them out to the short term portion uh, as needed. And so this will also help me to go back to the balance sheet or the trial balance and look at these loans and be able to tie each individual balance out rather than grouping them together in one loan balance. And I can use this account number to basically tie out to the loan number. Now, when I display this to somebody else, then of course, I, don't, I may not want this. this. This balance sheet that I'm using right now is more conventional for internal use with these, these items in there. So I might then make a custom balance sheet with the editing item, grouping these two things together in just simply one group called um, a, so for example, you might then edit it if I was going to uh, give a custom balance sheet to somebody else for external use, as opposed to this being my internal use, I'd go down here. And we'd want to go to uh, the liabilities, so the long-term liability. And I'll take this item and then highlight this item. And then I'm going to add a group. So I'm going to say I'd like to put this in a group and just call it uh, notes table and total. And then, and then I'm going to uh, add that group. And then I'll just minimize that group setting so that, that it'll be closed up. So the, the report that I give to someone else, I'll save this report as a separate report. And then if I was to go back over here and say the external balance sheet, the one that I'm going to give to someone else that doesn't have, you know, account numbers in it and whatnot that really helped me for my internal use would look something more like this. And then you just got notes payable with the one account in it. So I'm not going to save that. It's going to, you know, I'm not going to save that change, but that's kind of how you can customize your reports using something like this and use a, a balance sheet to help both help you to track the information and then group your information like this. We'll also talk about the month end adjusting entries where we will break out the short term and long term portion of, of the notes, which I would do just periodically at the end of the month or the end of the year, and then go back to basically our system where we have the two loans so we can track those loan balances as we make the payments for them. Also note that there's nothing on the income statement right now for these transactions because there, there was no effect on the income statement. And I want to get used to, to using, if I go to the accounting drop down, the trial balance report as well. So to do that, I'm going to go to the reports over here and I want to get uh, a little bit more used to adding the trial balance report. I will be printing the trial balance report and giving you a copy of it. And this is the best report really to check your numbers because it's going to have all the accounts without the subtotals in one place. So if I was to run the trial balance for the end of uh, January, let's go ahead and run that. You can see how much easier it is to look at uh, for this report. You can just check these numbers off and see if they if they line up uh, for you. Nothing yet on the income statement for the month of January.